Hey YouTubians, what's up? I'm another XYZ, and welcome back to another Club Banger! Today we're hanging out in r slash Tales from Retail. Stories from the front lines of the retail world. Let's hop right on in. Camouflage does its job. Customer can't find her own shirt. Blames us. I work at a women's clothing store in an area with a high percentage of wealthy suburban mom types. Yesterday, we had a pair of ladies in the store who weren't the nicest, but they weren't being outwardly mean either. I could overhear them trash-talking the clothes in the fitting room, but, you know, to each their own, right? Anyways, a little context. Our fitting room is at the back of the store, and we take all our unprocessed clothes out to a rack and two bins by the cash wrap to process. The whole store is organized by types of clothes, yoga, swim, running, travel, etc. And everything is sorted into neat, organized piles. We keep it clean and organized during the day. So, all of a sudden, the employee working in the fitting room comes out to me at the processing rack and says, Have you seen a camo shirt accidentally come through? One of our customers can't find the shirt she wore in. Now, I haven't seen it. And also, it's a slow as heck day. And I have maybe 20 items of clothing in my bin, so there's not much to check. Nope, not there. Out comes Camo Lady, CL. Camo Lady announcing to the whole store, Has anyone seen my camo shirt? I ask her politely if she's checked her fitting room, her purse, and her other shopping bag. She insists that, of course, she's already checked there, and we must have done something with her shirt. She's now instructing us to look under all the tables and triple check the processing area. I have somewhere to be. This is ridiculous. We're all running around looking for her shirt, but it's nowhere to be found. I offer to take her phone number so she can get to her important place and we can call her if it turns up later. She's now adamantly insisting that we have placed her very worn and not our brand camo shirt on a rack somewhere with the bathing suits or athletic clothes. Finally, I convince her to give me her phone number and she leaves in a huff. Fast forward about 20 to 30 minutes, and I find her camo shirt in the fitting room, wadded up in a ball on the floor. I gave her a call, no answer, full inbox. An hour later, she calls us and my manager, M, that was on break when all this went down, answers the call. Yeah, we found your shirt. It was in the fitting room. Well, that's impossible. I looked there. I need you to ship it to me. Well, we can't ship your own shirt to you, but we can hold on to it here as long as you need so you can come pick it up. At this point, camo lady was so angry that she refused to speak. My manager sat on the phone in silence, with her for a bit before saying, hello, hello, and hanging up. She still hasn't called back. Also, she didn't buy anything at the store, of course. TLDR, lady drops her camo shirt in the fitting room, doesn't see it and insists we purposefully lost it. Later on, she leaves, we find the shirt and she insists that we pay shipping to send it back to her so she doesn't have to come back and get it. That's gonna be a oof, <laughs> an oof for me. The camouflage, like I said, camouflage did its job, baby. The shirt was hiding in the corner the whole time. <laughs> Magnets can be hazardous to one's health. So this was a few years back, when I worked in the electronics department of a certain large retailer. As you may or may not know, many retailers put some of the more expensive movies in plastic locking boxes. When you check out, the cashier uses a large bar magnet to open the plastic box. Pretty simple theft deterrent. On this particular evening, it was me and one other person manning the electronics desk. Normally, we would each have a bar magnet on a keychain that we would wear on our belt loops, but fairly recently, the loop on both of the magnets busted off, so we were carrying them in our pockets. Fast forward to about 8 or 9, and my coworker takes off, giving me his keys and also his magnet. Now I have two of these large magnets in my pocket. I'm milling about in the department, putting movies in plastic boxes, when a couple comes up to my desk to buy a few items. No big deal. I slip my bar magnet in my front shirt pocket and begin to ring them up. The last item I grab to scan is one of those movies in a plastic lockbox I mentioned. Good thing I've got two magnets, right? I grab the second magnet that's in my pants pocket and take the movie out of its box. Then I take that magnet, put it in the same shirt pocket I used for the other one. Huge mistake. Instantly the two magnets snap together, right on my nipple. I'm screaming internally at the magnetic titty twister that I'm receiving, but at the same time I don't want to cause a scene or anything, so I finish ringing the couple up, with my nipple still clamped. Surely they had to know something was up because of my facial expression, but they said nothing as I handed them a receipt and wished them a good rest of their night. The second they walked away from the desk, I reached into my pocket and pried the two magnets apart, which was honestly pretty difficult with the two of them wedged into a small pocket. As soon as I free my poor nipple, I feel blood start to run down my chest. Great. I head to the employee bathroom and take my shirt off. Sure enough, I had split my nipple open pretty good. I wash myself off with the sink and put a band-aid over it. Good enough, I guess. I head back to my department and try to forget what I just did to myself, but every move I make is pure agony. The slightest movement of my shirt across my battle wound descends daggers of pain shooting across my chest. I literally make it about 15 minutes before I throw in the towel. I go to find the manager on duty and explain what happened. They stifle a laugh and tell me that it's fine if I have to go home. 
Now, this was my Friday, so I spent the rest of the weekend freaking out that they were going to make me fill out an accident report, which involves a possible drug test, one that I would surely not pass. Luckily for me, there was no report. I did get endless-ish for the rest of time. I worked there as a guy with half a nipple. Even to this day, five or six years later, that nipple chafes real easily, and I have a healthy respect for the power of magnets. <laughs> oh no, Poppy. <laughs> oh, RIP to your nipple, my dude. All right, can we get can we get an RIP in the chat for this person's nipple? <laughs> that sucks, man. Oh, that's literally front front lines battle wounds right there. <laughs> yes, lady. We're definitely committing attempted murder to get you to come back. These days I work at Redacted in the auto care center. The other night I was working a normal shift on an otherwise normal day. A customer had come through and gotten a tire replaced. I didn't know the full situation at the time, but it was apparently covered under the road hazard warranty and as such she got a free tire. Fairly normal stuff. A few hours later, I'm straightening my aisles while the guys in the shop are wrapping the last few vehicles out in the bay. I get a call on the phone from the manager's office needing to speak with one of the shop techs. After I get one and he takes the call, he informs me of what went down. The lady from earlier had just gotten her third tire under the road hazard warranty. The previous two tires replaced both had non-repairable sidewall damage in the same spot on the car, so they were replaced free of charge. The service manager had spitballed some ideas on what could be happening to cause this to happen, throwing off ideas like, maybe you hit the same thing in the road more than once, or maybe someone could be trying to slash your tires. I don't know how plausible those were, but certainly something is causing a very specific damage to keep happening to the tire in the same spot. The lady upon hearing that second idea goes home and calls management to insinuate that maybe one of our shop techs is slashing her tires to drum up more business. I immediately busted out laughing like a madman and nearly fell over behind the counter at the absolute stupidity of such a statement. I could just say she's overly paranoid if her half-brained idea made any sense at all, but she got two free tires. So no, we're not committing felonies to cost ourselves more money, lady, but I thank you for the laughs that I sorely needed. Yeah, this one doesn't make any sense. <laughs> this lady has nothing. Has, why would she even think that? Because they're not drumming up business. They're losing money on a tire. <laughs> it's like a little warranty thing. And how does that generate more business for them? I guess it makes like their numbers look better for that kind of thing. But at the same time, so wild. Nobody would do that. When you get the same customer three times in a row and they don't recognize you. Me. Hello. Thank you for calling. How can I help you today? Customer shouting down the phone. I'm not a missus. Excuse me, ma'am? You sent me a letter today calling me a missus. I am a miss. Sorry, miss. It's an error in our system. It puts people as missus sometimes. There's no way to fix it currently. Put me on the phone to your manager. Me, knowing that they will do nothing. They're not available right now. Sorry. Put me through to someone else if you're going to be so rude about it. Me, lol, what? Sorry, no one else is available. We're very busy. Even so, they'd tell you the same thing. Customer hangs up. One minute later. Hello, and thank you for calling. How may I help? Customer still shouting. Right, I just had the worst person who answered me. She insulted me and abused me? Me, recognizing her voice. Okay, miss, what's the issue? Customer repeats her problem. Me, repeats my answer. Customer. That's it. Put me on the phone with the manager. She's not available right now. Put me on the phone with a man. I have a unisex name and a feminine sounding voice. I'm struggling to think of a proper response to that. S sorry miss, but we have to tell you the same thing as well. Customer hangs up. Another minute passes. Hello, thank you for calling. How can I help? Put me on with your manager. Miss, I've already told you. We can't fix this issue right now and my manager is not available. Customer hangs up. Me, ugh. Coworker, what's up? I just had a woman screaming down the phone at me because we can't put miss on her account. Oh, we fixed that issue. Oh, F. That is pretty funny because I've definitely been in that situation before where like somebody calls in or like tries to reach out to technical support and I used to work technical support at a pretty big company and honestly, there would be times where I'm like, we can't fix it. It's a bug. Uh, they're, they're working on that right now. There's nothing I can do about it. And they come back and repeatedly complain to me about it only to find out that we actually found a way to fix it and that there was a very specific way of fixing it and whoopsie poopsie. <laughs> so that one's pretty funny. Super relatable. Way to tweet yourself out of a job. So I worked on a college campus. You would hope people would be more educated, but nope. And we were hiring for our print department. We went through numerous applications, did our interviews, and were ready to offer someone the job. Now they still have to go through HR. So when we call to let them know, we make sure to let them know their employment is not set until they have completed their HR paperwork. 
This genius decided to tweet within the hour, something along the lines of, Got a job at the campus print center, free prints for all my n-words. Upon being made aware of this tweet by someone who knew her, I immediately called up HR and asked about rescinding the job offer. And since she had not had her appointment yet, it was no problem. I called her a little bit after that, and it went to voicemail. I did the standard, upon further consideration, we've decided to go another direction, and left it at that. She never did call back or ask for any further explanation, but it was funny as hell to see a bit later on her Twitter. Can a job take back their employment offer? Oh, I can't tell how much restraint it took me not to comment, but it was fun to see some of her followers basically telling her she was SOL. Oh, and just to clear things up, this wasn't a private Twitter, it was public. So it's not like I had to go search around for someone who knew her to be able to see it. Oof, 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 oof. See, that's why you gotta wait. You gotta wait till you have the job offer. You gotta, you gotta wait till you, your first day before you start going, making jokes like that. Even then, don't offer free stuff to people, bro. Ah, oh, you set yourself up for failure. All it took was one tweet to end your life. Ah, <laughs> oh, what a bummer. The shortest employment in history. Short WTF story from the old gas station. The old gas station had a real problem with keeping the staff. Many quit within the first month. Some lasted a lot less than that. The drawback is advertising and interviewing people constantly. This one guy takes the cake. We usually had at least 30 to 40 candidates per vacancy, and the manager wasn't picking great candidates. We pick this guy and called in for an interview. Me and the manager call him in and begin the interview. He passed and we hired him on the spot. We start by taking him to the guy stocking shelves and tell him to show him how to stock and face up produce. He says, wait, I'll have to fill shelves? I quit and walks out the door with one of our uniforms. He quit in less than two minutes on the job. Edit, this guy had beaten the record. The previous record, second place, was by a teenage lad who quit in 30 minutes. To be fair, he had learning difficulties and was worried he'd F things up in the fast pace. We understood perfectly that he was uncomfortable and nervous. We parted on good terms. Shame. Nice guy. Third place went to a woman who was put on register straight from an interview. Normal practice. Everything was going well until the computer system crashed. Happened regularly. And she thought she had broken it. Started panicking, started hyperventilating. She left only after three hours. Yikes. <laughs> yikes, yikes, yikes. Oof. That's Everybody in that one was a, just like oof on oof on oof. What did you think you were going to have to do with this job just stand behind a register all day of course you're gonna have to fill shelves <laughs> when you work at a gas station i mean that's probably an ex i feel like that's an expectation to be able to face shelves make sure things look neat take out empty boxes stuff like that and grab whatever is left on like in the back room and stuff and restock stuff i mean that's just common practice all right y'all well thank you for tuning in for this episode of r slash tales from retail and of course as always if you have any suggestions for any future subreddits or any subreddits I have done in the past but you'd like to see again, drop it in the comment section down below. And remember, no glove, no love. Peace.